Hello everybody, it's Richard here from Arithmetic and I thought it'd be really cool just to do a short little video showcasing the Cambridge One CPU that I built for the Retro Computer Festival 2019 at the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge, England. I should probably start off by saying I'm, I'm actually shooting this on my iPod Touch so if the pictures of the video is a bit wobbly or the sounds not particularly great then I do apologise and hopefully I'll do something slightly better in the future. But anyway this is the Cambridge One. It's a 4-bit homebrew 7400 series based CPU or computer and even though it's 4-bit it can also do 8-bit calculations as well using a technique called bit slicing and by CPU or, or computer what I mean is that a computer is a machine which stores a program or a set of instructions and then fetches those instructions, decodes them and executes them to perform some kind of calculation or, or computation. And that's exactly what this what this computer or machine can do. So it's a little bit of a guided tour there's kind of three main parts if you like of of the CPU there's the the lovely blink and lights which represent the binary information the four bit binary information flowing around the system there's the 7400 series ICs which perform or process the the binary information. So for example in the middle here we have a whole bunch of 4-bit registers. And the value at any point in time is represented in these, in these LEDs. A bit further up there's a bunch of ICs that are used to do some binary, binary arithmetic. So on the on the on the right hand side here that's a a 4-bit adder, there's a couple of buffers and there's an XOR to do the 2's complement and on the left hand side just here there's a, a comparator so that's useful for pr producing the, the status flags which are represented here which are useful for conditional jumps and, and other instructions and towards the top there's a, a program counter and on the top left hand side is the all-important RAM or memory chip. As I said this is a 4-bit machine but it can do 8-bit calculations, operations as well uh, and that's partly due to the 8-bit data bus that you can see here, so it's not 4 bits, it's 8 bits all the way through there and also the address bus is, is 8 bit as well so it can store up to 200 or address up to 256 individual bits of memory. So we've got the LEDs, we've got the ICs and there's a whole bunch of wiring that you can see all over the board as well. So these have been painstakingly and intricately laid down and then ripped up and laid down again. Um, the grey wires represent the data path so all the bits of information that you can see flashing in the LEDs they travel down along these these wires and get stored in different registers and flow through the added perform calculations etc 
And the blue wires are the control lines or the, the control path. And you can think of those really as the the nerves of the of the machine. So if the ICs are the organs, then the the blue wires are used to make sure they're they operate at the at the right point in time for a given instruction. And you can see if I move a bit further down, attached to the control lines here is this Arduino, Arduino Micro. So some of you purists that might be watching may be thinking, hang on a minute, what's what's that thing doing there? That's not a 7400 series. And you'd be absolutely right. So um, the Arduino is there for, for two reasons, actually. The first is as a way to write a program to the memory. So if I wanted to program this, I'd go into my Arduino sketch, I'd write a bunch of code according to the instruction set of the machine, I'd compile it, and when I've done that, uh, the Arduino will take all of those instructions and it will write them all the way up to, through the data path, all the way up to the, the memory chip before the program starts executing. And the second reason for having that Arduino Micro there is as a virtualized control unit. So if I was being a complete purist about this, what I would have done is uh, called up my supplier, bought a load of ROM read-only memory chips, and I would have hooked them up to a sequencer, uh, hook them up to the instruction register and also to the to the clock that you can see flashing down here and I would have programmed those those ROMs uh, so that for a given instruction and a given state of the machine the correct control signals were sent to the, the various ICs on the board. Um, now the reason I didn't do that was uh, simply because when I started designing and building this machine, I didn't quite know what the instruction set architecture was going to be. Uh, so what I decided to do instead was uh, kind of virtualize the control unit. And by doing that, I can write microcode really, really quickly to um, control which signals are sent to the ICs at a given point in time. And it's it's worked really well, actually. So So what happens is the uh, the Arduino controls a clock, acts as a sequencer, and then for a, a given point in time, various, or for the given instruction, various signals are sent um, out to these 595 shift registers, and they send off the, the control lines. So it's kind of cheating a bit, but actually it's it's worked out to be quite a neat way of, of um, being able to allow the computer and the instruction set to evolve. So I built this over a course of a month, as I said, to showcase at the Retro Computer Festival. And I built it in about 29 days and I didn't have quite enough time left to write a lot of software for it. So uh, what's running at the moment is a very simple Knight Rider style Larson scanner. So if I just go over to this potentiometer here, I can speed the clock up and you can see the, the Larson scanner working very nicely. And, and of course this, this computer runs at 40 hertz, a massive 40 hertz, so it's definitely not the fastest machine in the world. And I can slow it all the way down again and then speed it up to my heart's content. So I'm going to write a few more programs for it. Uh, I think next I'm going to do something to utilize the the eight bit uh, performance of the of the machine, and I think for now that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to find out more about the arithmetic project, you can follow me on Twitter. So go to at arith underscore matic. Or if you want to find out more about the arithmetic kits 
or anything else about the project, then visit the website at arith-matic.com.